Hi everyone! If this is your first time in Godot and you want to understand the basics of this game engine with a basic bouncy ball demo, then this video is for you. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to create some simple 3D meshes, set up a camera and a light, and even add a bit of physics to have your objects interact with each other. As usual, don't forget that you can get the demo scene and all the assets from this demo on my GitHub with all my other Godot tutorials. And on that note, time to dive in and take our first steps in Godot. Alright, first of all, of course, we need to download the software. So just head over to Godot's website to the download section and pick the version that matches your OS. You'll notice that there are two variations, either with or without mono. Basically, mono support is useful if you plan on doing C Sharp in Godot, which can be more efficient than using an interpreted language like JDScript, but it can also be a bit tougher to learn if you're not familiar with it yet. So yeah, it's kind of a personal choice here. Anyway, so let's say that you go for the basic version. Once it's downloaded, just unzip the archive and you've got Godot on your computer. I'm on Mac, so I just need to drag and drop this application in my applications folder, and then it's readily available. Now let's open up the engine and see how it works. When Godot starts up, it will show you a panel to pick or create a new project. Pretty standard stuff, but a pretty cool feature is that you can actually define your own tags on your projects, and then simply search by this tag in your list if you're looking for specific projects. So that's a really neat way of organizing like all your games, demos, tests, and all that stuff. Anyway, to open a project, just double click on it, and the actual editor will then open up with your project loaded in. For now, of course, our project is completely empty, except for the little Godot icon that is imported by default. So the next step is to learn how to create 3D scenes with meshes inside. To start off, let's take care of making our red ball object. Okay, now in order to create a new scene, we need to go to the hierarchy panel in the top left corner and choose one of the possible node types for the root. The node is the core entity in Godot. It's a little piece of scene that can hold a more or less complex component and participates to the logic, the visuals, the physics, etc. The node it is simply a type, but of course, you also have a long list of built-in node types that already have useful components and can be mixed and matched to build your own behaviors. The engine sorts these node types in three categories, 2D, 3D, and UI, and each category has its own color. So basically, whenever you see blue, it's 2D, whenever you see red, it's 3D, and whenever you see green, it's UI. Here, let's stick with 3D, so we'll go for a simple node 3D root element. If you look on the right in the inspector panel, you see that this base 3D node type has very few properties. It's simply a 3D transform that you can show or hide. So to really visualize things and make our red ball, we have two solutions. Either we change the type of this root node to pick a more evolved type that includes a mesh renderer, or we create a new child node under it to handle this mesh. Usually, I personally think it's best to keep a basic root node at the top and then have child nodes handle the visuals or the logic, because it gives you more room to adjust offsets, rearrange the hierarchy, and just overall maintain your objects. So let's click on our root and add a new child node. Here, I'll use the search bar to find the mesh instance 3D node type and then I can double click on it to create a new instance as a child of my root in the scene. Except that, as you can see, or rather can't see, we don't have anything to show. The thing is that in Godot, like in all game engines, most components require resources to function properly. For example, a mesh renderer needs mesh data to actually know what to render. You can of course import some complex model from Blender, but you can also create basic shapes directly in Godot and more precisely, directly inside your component. If you click on this empty value in the mesh property, you see that you get a drop-down with various options. The top of the list allows you to create a new mesh data resource on the fly, if you just need simple shapes, and the options at the bottom let you load a 3D model file if need be. Here, let's just go for the sphere mesh option. 
you see we do get a visual in our scene, and the interesting thing is that our resource is directly linked to our component, and editable inside its inspector. So we finally have a sphere, which is pretty cool, but the white color is not that great. We want to make it red. Again, it's just a matter of creating the right resource in the right place. And this time, we actually want to create a material resource inside our new mesh data resource. We can do so by opening the surface material override section and again creating a new resource by clicking here. We're going to use a standard material 3D, so we basically now have a material resource inside our sphere mesh resource and we can open its sub inspector to change its color to red in the albedo subsection. Now, depending on which game engines you're coming from, whether you've used one before, this idea of embedding inspectors inside one another might seem a bit strange at first. But trust me, you quickly get used to it and it's a real time saver when you start to have a lot of files in your project, cause in the end, everything is localized in a neat context. Anyhow, at this point, we've prepared our basic red ball. So, should we just keep building a whole scene around this? Well, in fact, a better solution is to just turn this ball into a single prefab, and then reuse it in a larger scene. This way, if we decide to add multiple balls in a scene, and we want to change something, we'll just have to update this reference model, and all the instances will get synced up. If you're coming from Unity Game Dev, you might be thinking that we need to explicitly create a new asset in our project based on our hierarchy to make it a prefab. But Kodo really makes it simpler than that. See this scene hierarchy that we just made? Well, that's a prefab. Yep, that's that simple. So basically, just by saving our scene in our project, we get a re-instantiable hierarchy just like a Unity prefab. With our red ball ready, let's now see how to set up our bigger scene and instantiate our brand new prefab inside it. To get a new fresh scene, let's go to the scene menu at the top and click on new scene. You see this brings us back to a new empty hierarchy where we can pick the type of root node that we want. We'll once again make a 3D scene and something I like to do is double click this node to rename it to root. Having conventions like this can be very helpful when you start to code things and you want to find nodes by name, or find references in your scene. Now in this scene, we know that we want a simple plane for our ball to bounce off of, and an instance of our ball scene from the previous section. To make the ground, we can once again use a mesh instant 3D node, give it a plane mesh shape, and leave it with the default white material. Then to add our ball to the scene, we just have to drag it from the file stock in the bottom left corner and drop it in the hierarchy. And ta-da! We have our two objects properly mixed in a new scene. If we want to try and run our game, we can simply click the play icon in the top right corner of the screen. Godot will ask us if we want to define the scene as the main one to run by default, so let's just accept. And then the engine will open a pop-up window with our very basic scene inside. The problem is that, of course, we can't see anything, because we don't have a camera, nor a light. So let's close this pop-up and add two new nodes to our 3D root node. A camera 3D and a directional light 3D. For the light, I'll bring it out of the origin and have it point at my object from the front, slightly above, for example. For the camera, to make sure I get an OK view, a good trick is to do the following. First, go to the View menu in the Scene Viewport panel. Then, split the viewport in two horizontally. And finally, select the camera node in the hierarchy and in the bottom half of the viewport, click on Preview in the top left corner. The bottom view now shows us what our camera sees, which for now is nothing. So let's bring our camera back and slightly up. To get a better result, we can also change the FOV parameter of our camera to a lower value, like 30 for example. And also note that if you want to translate the camera in local space instead of global space, typically to move accordingly to its current orientation, you can press T or click this little button. If we run this again, that's it. We see our white ground and the red ball laying on it. 
Last but not least, let's quickly discuss how to add some physics to objects so that the ball falls and bounces off the white plane. Ok, to begin with, let's make sure that our ball falls down thanks to gravity. To do this, we can go to a hierarchy and in the row of the node instance of our ball scene, click on the icon of a scene with a triangle. This directly opens the reference scene that this instance comes from and it avoids us having to search in our project directories for the right file. Now, if you're somewhat familiar with physics, you probably know that in order to get a 3D object moving thanks to auto physics and gravity, you usually need two elements. A rigid body to compute the forces and actually have the object move, and a collider to also have it be stopped by other objects in the scene. In Godot, there are two node types for this. The rigid body 3D and the collision shape 3D. Let's add both to a ball scene. You'll notice that, as is, Godot shows us warnings next to our physics-related notes, and the message indicates that, basically, we need to parent the collision shape to the rigid body to have them work properly. So that's how it works in this engine. Whenever you do physics, you need to give the physics body node first, and then inside as a child node, the shape of this physics element. And of course, don't forget to actually define a shape inside the collision shape 3D component, by making another on-the-fly resource. Here we can take the sphere shape 3D type. Ok, let's save this, and then go back to the tab with our big scene at the top. Of course, we don't actually see any visual changes, but we can go to a hierarchy and right-click on the ball scene instance to toggle on the editable children option. This shows us the content of the instantiated scene, and we see that we have a new physics-related child note. Great, so let's try this out. Well, if we launch this, the sphere doesn't actually move. But why is that? Rigid bodies are subjected to gravity by default. So what's the matter? The issue lies in our ball hierarchy. For now, we naively stacked all of our child nodes next to each other. The mesh and the rigid body are siblings. So what's actually happening without us knowing is that the rigid body is indeed falling but the visual mesh isn't linked to it, and it doesn't follow. To solve this, we just need to take our mesh node and drag it under the rigid body. And if we restart the game, it works. The ball is now falling, but of course it's going through the ground plane, cause this plane doesn't have any physics components yet. We basically need to do the same thing for the ground, Except that this time uh, we'll use a static body 3D instead of a rigid body 3D cause this plane shouldn't move. It will only be used as a static collider to stop the ball. The rest of the steps is pretty much the same. We parent the collision shape to the body, define a shape inside this component, and finally adjust the size of the shape to match the visual mesh. If we restart the game once more, we see that the ball now indeed gets stopped by the ground. Pretty cool. A last little improvement we can make is make the ground bouncy, cause for now, this sudden stop is really harsh on the eyes. To do this, the trick is to right click in our project doc to create a new resource, and more precisely we want to make a new physics material. Then we can click on it to show its inspector and up the bounce parameter to something like 0.7. Finally, we just have to click on our ground static body and drag the physics material to its physics material override slot. Once we restart the game, we see that the ball now falls down, bounces on the ground a few times, and eventually loses energy. So here you go! You now know how to set up a basic 3D scene in Godot, and even how to add some physics. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and that it helped you navigate the Godot editor if you're still a bit new to it. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.